Hello there and welcome back to another video with me Rufus Gazelle and we are back, yes back here at Hollybrook Cemetery in Southampton where we're going to be paying our respects to Frederick Fleet, a British crewman, sailor and survivor of the RMS Titanic and the sun is literally blinding me right now as we go and enter the cemetery and try and locate his grave. Hollybrook Cemetery is not only famous for the comedic legend that is Benny Hill who in fact is buried just over there near that said church but on this side of the cemetery the other side there is a man who is laid to rest over here who in fact has a very interesting story to tell he was part of a very historical event on the evening of April the 14th 1912 and we all know what happened that fateful evening in fact it was the sinking of RMS Titanic and this particular man was part of a six-man team in charge of the crow's nest, the lookout, looking out for icebergs. How horribly wrong that all went. Frederick Fleet was born on the 15th of October 1887 and died on the 10th of January 1965, aged 77 years old. And this man, Frederick Fleet, was in fact the first man aboard RMS Titanic to initially raise the alarm from his crow's nest sighting the iceberg straight ahead. He rang the bridge, proclaiming iceberg right ahead. And these fateful words that were said would no doubt condemn so many souls to the sea and how many lives were gonna change. But for Frederick Fleet, he survived. And I'm gonna tell you more about his story now as we walk to his grave just down here. Fleet was born in Liverpool, England on the 15th of October 1887. He never knew his father and his mother abandoned him and ran off with a boyfriend to Springfield, Massachusetts in the United States, never to be seen or heard from again. Fleet was raised by a succession of foster families and distant relatives. In 1903 he went to sea as a deck boy, working his way up to able seaman. Before joining the crew of RMS Titanic, he had sailed for over four years as a lookout on the RMS Oceanic. As a seaman, Fleet earned five pounds per month, plus an extra five shillings for lookout duties. It was as lookout that Fleet joined the Titanic in April 1912, along with five other watchmen. Fleet boarded Titanic in Southampton on the 10th of April 1912. The ship made two stops, first in Cherbourg, France, and then in Queenstown, Ireland. The lookouts, six in total, made two-hour shifts due to extreme cold in the crow's nest. The trip was uneventful until the night of the 14th of April 1912. At 10 o'clock that night, Fleet and his fellow lookout Reginald Lee replaced George Simmons and Archie Jewell at the nest. They were passed the order given earlier by second officer Charles Lighttoller to watch out for small ice. The night was calm and moonless, which made it difficult to spot the icebergs due to the lack of waves breaking against the base of the iceberg and reflection. Despite Fleet and his fellow lookouts having repeatedly requested to be provided with binoculars, they were not available for the lookouts. This is sometimes attributed to the last minute change in the hierarchy of the ship when officer David Blair was removed from the maiden voyage crew due to the knock-on effect of Henry Tingle Wilde being appointed chief officer without mentioning where the binoculars had been located. It has also been mentioned that Blair accidentally took the keys of the cabinet containing the binoculars with him. Fleet testified at the subsequent inquiries into the disaster that if he and Lee had been issued with binoculars, he said, we could have seen it, the iceberg, a bit sooner. When asked how much sooner, he responded, well, enough to get out of the way. In later life, Fleet suffered severe depression, likely at least in part due to the Titanic disaster itself. On that fateful evening at 12 midnight, Fleet and Lee were relieved by Alfred Frank Evans and George Hogg. Fleet went down to the boat deck and helped to prepare lifeboat number six. Minutes later, once the boat was prepared, second officer Lightoller put quartermaster Robert Hitchens in charge of the lifeboat and ordered Fleet aboard as well. Once the lifeboat was lowered and away from the sinking ship, the boat tried to reach the lights of a ship in the distance, thought to be the SS Californian. While Hitchens remained at the tiller, Fleet and Arthur Godfrey Putin managed the oars. 
Arguments and problems arose on boat six as Quartermaster Hitchens kept insulting and mistreating the rowers, including Margaret Molly Brown, the American socialite, and Helen Churchill Candy. Later in the night, there was an argument about whether to return for survivors, with Hitchens warning against returning, saying they would be swamped by swimmers. The lifeboat finally reached the RMS Carpathia by 6am on Monday the 15th of April 1912. After those tragic events, fleets served on the Titanic sister ship RMS Olympic before leaving the White Star Line in August 1912 after noticing the company treated those involved with the Titanic differently. For the next 24 years he sailed for different shipping companies including the Union Castle Line. Fleets served on merchant ships throughout World War I. Later, he was the ship's lookout again on the Olympic during the 1920s and early 30s. When he left the sea in 1936, he was hired by Harland & Wolfe, the same company that built Titanic, to work at the company's shipyards in Southampton. While working there, he lived with his wife's brother. He served again during World War II. Later, when he was about to retire, he became a newspaper salesman, going through difficult economic times. Shortly after Christmas, on the 28th of December 1964, Fleet's wife died and her brother evicted him from the house. Consequently, Fleet fell into a downward spiral of depression. He returned to his brother-in-law's home and hanged himself in the house's garden on the 10th of January 1965. Fleet was buried in a pauper's grave at Hollybrook Cemetery in Southampton. And as we finally arrive at the grave of Frederick Fleet, we finally located it here at Hollybrook Cemetery in Southampton. And no sooner have we arrived at his grave, the heavens have started to open, as you can see. It's a shower nonetheless, but yet it's slightly getting rather wet down here. But in front of me is the final resting place of Frederick Fleet, 1887 to 1965, lookout on RMS Titanic. And let's take a look at his final resting place in front of us here. So let's take a closer look at this fine headstone that has been laid here in memory of Frederick Fleet. Now I've read this once already, but I'm going to do it again. 1887 to 1965, he was a lookout on RMS Titanic, and this was erected to his memory by the Titanic Historical Society Incorporated, Indian Orchard, Massachusetts, USA. And I love the fact that there's this lovely engraving here in the centre of the Titanic sailing on the seas, steaming away there. And someone has recently laid some recent flowers here because they look quite fresh. And down here, somebody has built a Lego model of Titanic itself. A nice little touch there in memory of this man, Frederick Fleet, who was such a big part of history during the disastrous sinking of RMS. Titanic. Now I'm so glad that the Titanic Historical Society were able to raise the funds to lay this lovely headstone in memory of Frederick Fleet because it wasn't until 1993 that this was actually laid and before that unfortunately his grave was unmarked so I'm glad he has something here now that people can visit and pay their respects. So there we have it guys the grave of Frederick Fleet here at Hollybrook Cemetery in Southampton. We're gonna say our goodbyes now and may you rest in peace, my dear friend, as we leave the cemetery behind. And all I wanna say now, guys, is thank you so much for watching today. Hopefully I've managed to get across as much information about his life as best I can. I'm gonna go this way. And hopefully I've done him and his family much respect today in coming here and just sort of shedding a light on his story and his grave here at Hollybrook. And I know these graves here at Hollybrook, not only Frederick Fleets, but Benny Hills as well, have been covered quite a few times here on YouTube. But this was my time to come here, my time to come and document it for myself. And hopefully I've done it justice. So to that end, guys, as we try and make our way across without yeah, stepping on anybody's grave, unrespectively, or disrespectively, I should say. I'm gonna try and head round to this footpath round here. But all I've got left to say, guys, is thank you so much for watching. Go and give this video a thumbs up if you love this content that I do for you guys. Um, go and share it if you so wish. 
and also subscribe if you are looking forward to future videos that I've got coming up. Now, I haven't done many videos for a while. Obviously, Benny Hill was filmed on the same day as this one. And before Benny Hill's video, it's been, I had a bit of a break where I wasn't able to get out and film anything due to the fact that I was actually saving up for this new microphone, which means I can now record without any problems like now, the wind. I had so many audio issues last time with the microphone I had at that time. And now I don't have that problem anymore. So I can get out and move around and film without the worries of facing in certain directions to avoid the wind. So I'm glad about that. So look forward to many, many future videos, guys. I've got loads of places lined up. Not only grave sites, famous grave sites, paying my respects, but filming locations and many, many other things that I've got in here, in my noggin, waiting to be developed. So thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video very soon. And like I say, give it a thumbs up. Take care. From here, a Hollybrook Cemetery vlog over.